Hey, this is Don McGrath. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about warm-ups. In particular, the mental aspects of warming up. Anyone who pursues any kind of uh, uh, athletics or sports, so whether it be climbing, baseball, softball, track and field, uh, you name it, um, most of those who most, most of those of us who take things uh, rather seriously um, warm up. Why do we warm up? Well, first of all, it enhances performance. We just perform better when we're warming up, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is in a, in a, in a few minutes. It also can help prevent injuries. So by warming up, you can actually decrease the chance of being injured. And third, it helps the experience feel better. When you're warmed up, your body responds better to the demands of, of uh, strenuous activity, so you actually it actually feels better. Okay, so that's why we warm up. Most of us who have done warm-ups or know about warm-ups think very much about the physical aspects of the warm-up. So let me talk first about the physical aspects of warming up. Okay, when you warm up, there's a, there's a few things that this does physically for you. First of all, it raises your heart rate. It gets you ready for the activity you're ready to uh, you're ready to take on, and increasing your heart rate does some other things too. Warming up also increases your respiration. You start to breathe a little more rapidly, preparing your body again for the exertion that's ahead. It also helps loosen up your joints and your muscles, making for more efficient movement. Synovial fluid actually starts to move more, more readily in your joints. Your muscles become warm. They move more rapidly or more easily uh, against uh, the other tissues. The, the friction decreases. The suppleness of the muscle increases. Blood flow increases. Perspiration uh, begins to happen. Warming up also starts to move blood um, that, that was going to your digestive system and some, some other bodily functions, move blood flow away from those areas and towards the muscles that you're going to be using in the, in the activities ahead. So these are just some, not all, of the, of the things that happen when you warm up in response to a warm up that help you to be physically prepared for the activity that's ahead of you. Okay, so how about, how about mentally? What happens uh, in a warm-up mentally? Let's talk about the mental aspects of a warm-up. Well, the real, the real thing that happens during a warm-up that prepares you mentally is a mindset shift. And specifically, what that mind shift, mind shift is, is going from where you're not climbing, where you're doing something else, okay, your mind is on something else, to to climbing. So it's going from doing anything else to being in the mindset to climb. So this is the major function of a warm-up from a mental aspect. Let's talk a little bit to, to, to help put some perspective behind this and, and help you understand some of the major concepts of what happens when you warm up mentally. Um, let's talk about memory and associative memory. Um, you know, our brains, unlike what uh, you know, some movies would have you believe and what some science fiction would have you believe, our brains don't work like computers, okay? They don't have instructions that get fetched from memory and then execute on something and come out with a result. That's not how our brains work. In fact, uh, a large part of the memories that we have or the memory system and how our memories are organized are through association. And so, to, I'll give you an example to, to kind of make this a little bit clearer. Let's say um, I, I hear someone say, or I, I see something on television or on the radio about a fire engine. Okay, so I hear, I hear the word or I see an image of a fire engine. Well, the way our brain works is through association. When that happens, um, I, can, I have other thoughts that can occur to me when I, when I, when I see that fire engine when I hear, or when I hear the word or phrase fire engine. I might think of emergency. Okay, I might think uh, of an emergency if I um, if I see a fire engine. I might think of fire, of heat, of a blaze. Okay. I might think of a truck. Okay, I might think of another type of truck. I might associate a memory of another type of truck with a fire engine. 
Or I may think more generally of the color red. So um, when you experience a thought, for example, fire engine, there are other things that you've been that you've learned to associate with fire engine, and this this is part of learning. It all depends on how many times you've been exposed to things. Okay, if you've been exposed to a lot of fires, let's say you've had several f uh, family fires that have uh, damaged uh, families' homes. If you see a fire engine, you're very likely to think of a home fire. Okay, you may also be thinking of emergency. Okay, if you live right down the street from uh, from a firehouse and they have a fleet of red trucks, you may very well think of red. Okay, if you're from a family that has a lot of trucks, um, you may very well think of different types of trucks. So it all depends upon your background and your psychological filters of what things occur to you when you when you hear a word or or see an image. Okay, so. That's kind of how our, our memory works. So through association, we may experience something and we may associate other images or thoughts with those things. This just happened to me today. My wife and I were out for a walk and uh, we were walking around the block and she saw some balloons outside of a home in our neighborhood indicating some sort of an event. And she, she exclaimed, oh my gosh, my, my father's birthday is the 27th. Okay, so she saw balloons, and that is in her mind, she associated a birthday, was one of the things she associated with balloons, and then that thought of a birthday made her think of her father's birthday, which was actually just a day away. So that's, that's what tends to happen. You have a thought, and it can lead to other thoughts that are very like, uh, closely associated with things. That's the way our brain organizes things, okay? Let me give you a little, uh, let's conduct a little experiment. This experiment that's been conducted many times. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and uh, if you could write down your answers, that would be great. Okay, so first, I'd like you to uh, write down what continent Kenya is on. Okay, what continent is Kenya on? Okay, give you a second to write that down. Okay, next. What are the colors typically associated with chess pieces? I'll give you a second to write that down. What colors are typically associated with the pieces in a chess game? Very good. Okay. And finally, name an animal you might see in a zoo. Okay, I hope you're done writing. Let me explain kind of some background behind this exper experiment. Um, this experiment is an attempt to demonstrate what I'll explain in a bit as priming, okay? So <clears throat> most people know or can look up on Google that Kenya is in Africa. So it's on the continent continent of Africa, okay? Most people who have played chess will associate black and white with the piece color of the pieces in a chess set. Now this last, this last uh, question is kind of the key question and the real, really the telling part of the experiment. In, uh, in many experiments that have been done of this, um, about half of the people named an animal that you would find in Africa. Okay, maybe it be a tiger, a lion, uh, a gazelle. Um, they actually would name an animal that comes from Africa because they had been primed to think of Africa. About 20% of the people, which is a really high number actually, name zebras because they've been primed to think about black and white. So I don't know how you fared. Um, again, it's not 100%, but about 50% of the people name an animal from Africa and about 20% of the people name a zebra, which is quite astounding. So this is an example of how our memories uh, are organized and how we, we organize through association in our memories. That brings us to what priming is. Okay, so priming is where when you have a thought or an experience, it, um, it can prime you to have other similar thoughts or experiences. And priming is a, is a very important mental aspect of warming up. What priming is meant to do is put you in a situation where you can cause yourself to recall 
the feelings of what it's like to be climbing, to be climbing well, to be warmed up. It, it can help you make that mindset. So by climbing in a relaxed environment on a warm up, it can put you in that state of mind where you're primed to climb again and climb uh, at your best. So it, it primes you to climb at your best. So again, the main aspect of mentally warming up is to put you in the mindset to go from not climbing to climbing. And priming is a key concept that's a result of the associative nature of our memory. Well, I hope you found this useful and I hope you can put it to work. The next time you're warming up, be thinking about priming yourself to climb at your best and improve your performance. Till next time, this is Don McGrath.